Last time we explored how one mind can illuminate the world even through its darkest hours. Because the light makers is not about sense of williams, it's about humans who carry both light and shadow within them. People whose inventions shaped civilizations, whose billions feed humanity and sometimes burned it to ashes. Welcome to episode 2 of the light makers. People who changed and inspired the world. So let's meet Fritz Haber, a German chemist, a Nobel Prize winner and perhaps the most complex figure in the 20th century science. His life is split by a staggering moral fracture. On one side, he is a savior, the architect who fed billions. On the other, he is an assassin, the father of chemical warfare. Haber is the ultimate example of dual use technology. The same knowledge that saves lives can also be optimized to end them. Around 1900, the world was staring down an ecological cliff. The global population was booming, but our farmlands were depleted of nitrogen, the nutrient essential for plant life. We were running out of fertilizer, mostly mined from limited deposits of nitrate. The fear was real. Widespread famine, a Malthusian catastrophe. Haber took on the impossible challenge. How to fix the inert nitrogen gas that makes up 78% of the air and turn it into a usable ammonia? Between 1894 and 1911, Haber cracked the code. The Haber-Boss process, refined by the industrial partner Carl Boss, used extreme heat and pressure to synthesize ammonia on an industrial scale. It was a scientific miracle and Haber famously called it turning air into bread. The numbers are incredible. The Haber-Boss process is directly responsible for sustaining nearly half of the world's current population, about 4 billion people. Scientists estimate that almost 50% of the nitrogen in human tissues today originated from this industrial process. It allowed the global population to jump from 1.6 billion in 1900 to over 7.7 .7 billion by 2018. He solved global hunger. He saved the world, but his patriotism instantly turned their genius towards destruction. For example, when World War I broke out in 1914, Germany was cut off from natural nitrate supplies by an allied naval blockade. Without nitrates, Germany couldn't make explosives. Haber's factory suddenly became Germany's most strategic asset. The plant that met fertilizer was swiftly repurposed to produce nitrates for gunpowder. Haber's science prolonged World War I, but he didn't stop there. An absolute German nationalist, he threw himself into creating a new terrible weapon. At the Second Battle of White Press in April 1915, Haber personally supervised the first mass deployment of chlorine gas. 6,000 canisters of gas were released, blowing into the Allied trenches. It resulted in 5,000 direct deaths and 10,000 casualties suffering the slow poison of suffocation. Haber defended this atrocity with the chilling logic, arguing that gas was statistically less cruel than sharpnel. He replaced a sense of humanitarian ethics with a cold, immoral commitment to technical efficiency. Death was death, he reasoned, regardless of the means. The cost of this moral compromise was immediate and tragic. Haber's first wife, Clara, an accomplished chemist herself furiously opposed his work. She called it a perversion of the ideals of science. That night, Haber returned from the white press attack, celebrating its success. Clara committed suicide with her husband's service pistol. Haber, prioritizing duty above all, left for the Eastern Front the very next morning. Years later, an even darker irony unfolded. Haber was born Jewish and was proud, decorated German patriot. But with the rise of the Nazis in 1933, his Jewish heritage superseded his immense service. The state he had sacrificed everything for rejected and forced him into exile. He died a broken man in 1934. The paradox of Fritz Haber is not just history, it's our current ethical blueprint. His legacy gives us the Haber test for all modern breakthroughs.